Hello guys, today we are going to talk about the wing of an aircraft. The aircraft generate wing generate lift based on two principles, one for Isaac Newton and one from Panori principle. According to Sir Isaac Newton, we have an airfoil which looks like this. And uh, for Newton says for every force, for every action there is a reaction. So when we are having a drag here at this side, which is pushing this thing down a downwash, we have an upwash here. So this goes up, and this is the way this this wing, this airfoil, or this wing is pushed up. That's as far as this scientist was concerned. He was a mathematician, a physicist, and they derived this. So here we have a downwash. Here we have a push, so this goes up. Then the other scientist we have is Panuri Prince Panuri. Panuri was a Swiss mathematician, and what he said is that uh, if we take this under an airfoil, and there is a stream of air that is coming here, we call it laminar flow. It will create two zones of pressure: one up will be lower and down. The reason is that the air that travels here travels faster and therefore the velocity is fast and then due to that the pressure becomes low. And down here travels slow because actually this is not drawn to scale, this is supposed to be a bit straight. So the pressure is low high here. And due to differential pressure, this wing goes up. Here we can draw, I don't know what you can see this, you can draw a reference line here. This reference line, at this point, the hair is coming in like this against the reference line, an angle is formed, which you call an angle of attack. If, for example, if this is a reference line and the hair is coming like this, you can draw like this and like this, and this forms an angle of attack. Okay? So this, uh, according to this, and then he, did, he brought a formula called P, pressure, static pressure, plus dynamic pressure, that's uh, density times velocity squared over 2, plus density against uh, G, which is acceleration due to gravity, times height, will be equal to a constant, which is here along a, a streamline. That was his philosophy and then, uh, sorry, principle, and then there was uh, law of conservation of energy. I don't know whether I could show you that in a diagram. I have it, I think. I've drawn it somewhere here. Look at that in a diagram. Yeah. It will save us a lot. Here, yeah. we have this. You can see this is bigger than this. This is a stream here. Let's assume this is a coming through this and this is narrower and this is wider so what do you think will happen here 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 will travel slow here it will travel fast so if that is the case what happens here will have uh, pressure will be low here it will be high so it's like the pressure here is greater than the pressure here and the velocity here is lower than the velocity here so v1 Velocity 1 is less than velocity 2 and pressure 1 which is here static pressure is greater than the pressure here. Here is low pressure. Okay. Now depending on the type of aircraft that is, is being made and for what purpose we have the airfoil scavenger. Either more pronounced, if it's more pronounced it sacrifices speed at the expense of lift. If less pronounced like that, like that. we have a uh, geometric, same, same lining and stuff like that. I don't know what I can be able to draw them. Uh, I have to draw them and show you a bit of this. So we could have uh, an airfoil that looks like this. We can have an airfoil that looks like this not so pronounced. You can have an airfoil that looks actually the same up and down. See? 
these are different diaphragms. This is more pronounced, um, upper camber is more pronounced, more curvature is there, less curvature, and even geometrically same here, and more. So this, depending on the type of aircraft that has been designed, the, this cross-section of the wing looks different from aerobatic aircraft to a commercial and all that. So we have, according to uh, Panuri, the equation which is here, written, where it says, okay, we have static pressure which is P, and then we have uh, dynamic pressure which is uh, pressure over V. That's a density, density times velocity squared over 2 plus density times as the relation due to gravity and height. So pressure, that's the pressure energy which is at the beginning when the air spring is hitting the air foil here. I showed you there, right here. This is static. We have dynamic and hydrostatic pressure. So here, and I have to explain one thing. So as this air moves up here, there's atmospheric pressure which is pressing down on it. So it sticks to the boundary layer. But at a certain point it stagnates that the stalling angle around 15, 16 degrees. So the, this air that is going along this get detached from the boundary layer and forms area of separation going this way. And here the turbulence will occur. The turbulence. I don't know whether I can show you that. Uh, area of turbulence. Suppose, suppose we take this, this thing like this, and we say the air is going from this side. Okay, this one is more pronounced like this. It's, so, area of turbulence will be here. It will form turbulence like this. And here it will be laminar flow, laminar straight flow here, laminar flow. This is turbulent flow and it will form a region of separation towards this end, trailing edge. This is leading edge. Okay. And we have here, actually we are just drawing, see, this all is there. This is all a mass of air, and this object is moving inside this, pushing against this air like this. It's inside this mass of air, and we have atmospheric pressure from up, which is pressing down on this. And here we have Koanda effect, so this one sticks here. Yeah, it sticks here. And also we have shear force. Shear force goes around this and forms a cycle here. Is making a cycle around the shear force with friction of force due to the viscosity of the fluid. Air is a fluid, so it forms a round cycle around this. Yeah, it's just a demo, I cannot show better than this. Okay, guys. So, according to these two scientists, that's how the wing of an aircraft generates lift. Of course, the other factors we are not considered. Like when you're talking of uh, the stalling point, uh, we're taking aerodynamic forces acting at single point CP center of pressure and stuff. This is the graph I'm explaining to you where the plane stalls at this stalling angle here because it starts to lose altitude here. And this is due to turbulence because the air stream along the boundary along this boundary, they are detached here and then forms a turbulence and forms a region of separation <coughs> maybe I will show you this is plus plus minus means here there is high pressure I can't illustrate and like you can point like these arrows are this differential pressure between these two low pressure this is a suction area high pressure here. So the difference between this is what causes this to go up. Sleep according to Panuri. So I've told you about the conservation of energy. The diagram I showed you before. And now let's talk about the vortices. So what happens about the vortices? The vortices is when the region of high pressure 
spills over to the low pressure area and in the forward motion of the plane it forms a spiral. This spiral goes towards the tapering edge, trailing edge here of this wing and causes more drag. So here we use we make it more tapered to overcome these vortices or put some fins here. Yeah. It's just a poor diagram I've drawn to show you this. These are the wings of an aircraft and uh, presumably I don't know which direction they okay the aircraft is moving forward according to this uh, force. Here here is the here are the wings. Okay. Yeah, this is a tip here. And this is a full sludge. They say this is a full sludge. Okay, later we talk about the uh, ailerons here, and laps, slats, spoilers, and how they contribute to the flight. And they already have told you about the radar. So that's how the wing of an aircraft generates lift. We are basing our argument on these two scientists, but there could be more because up to date, engineers are still arguing. They are not sure how actually the wing of an aircraft generate lift because there could be more, but this is what we know up to now. Okay guys, so we're gonna do more about the, the wing of an aircraft. And um, we're going to actually analyze the structure of the wing, how it's made, what's inside, yeah materials and, and stuff like that but for now i think this is enough for today's video so guys please subscribe to my channel share like comment if you know more maybe you're out there and watching this and you think something's not right please comment so that i can i can see we maybe we can discuss that in another video Thank you guys for now. Have a nice time. See you again. Bye.